gear in dot hack fragment. I have some. You have some. Even Yaki has some. The question is, with so many options, and I mean so many options, what do you choose? Now, I know what you're thinking. It's not item kept, just use the high level stuff! However, like most things in this gem of a game, I can say that thankfully there is a surprising, uh, surprising amount of depth to your selections. Little things from the exact type of buffs you choose to complement your build, to the very weapons you use and the skills they possess, not to mention inherent boosts, can give your character some unique flavor and abilities that can really set you apart from any other character even in the same class you see. So while certain weapons are more attainable than others and certain gear is more tangibly beneficial, especially for various classes with different armor restrictions, uh, this series is going to take a bit of a dive into characters uh, with specific builds and show off exactly what makes them tick. So, please do join us as we enter the fascinating world of Dot Hack Fragment character builds, where we'll uncover some items that are old favorites, some items that are newly discovered gems within the community, maybe not super new, but perhaps new to you, and maybe some things that are more powerful than they initially appear. Hello, and uh, to kick off this series, I figured we would start with my Wave Master Dionysius. Not my first character uh, built in the game, but uh, it'll make sense once we go through the flow of a few of these. Again, we're not getting into the actual creation of the character itself. I've done a couple videos both here and at a fragment from the Net Slum. Uh, going over the ins and outs of character creation, which is in and of itself a varied and fascinating thing. Probably one of the more classic dot hack things the game has to offer. Uh, this series is going to pretty much be focused more on the gear. I'll give options where I feel there should be options, but I do want to stress this disclaimer outright. These are my personal builds. Uh, they are not optimal builds by any stretch of the imagination. They're just what works best for me. I uh, figured this would be a fun little way of sort of showing my process with characters, how I enjoy playing the game, and maybe give a little inspiration if you're stuck on where to go. Maybe just a laugh if you don't like the build at all. But anyway, getting into this, uh, Wave Master's tend to hit very, very hard. As you can see, this character is level 88, but I would consider the gear part of this build absolutely done. Um, 99 magic attack and accuracy are the big things. Defense is bolstered by size on the physical end, and, uh, you know, you're stuck with light armaments, so it's never going to be elite, elite stuff. Got some decent resistances there. Uh, you could see my fire is weakest because I chose water element as my strongest. Um, we'll go through the armor first because when it comes to weapons there's actually a bit of a quirk to this character. So Raven's Crest is a level 82 light head armor. Uh, there are better ones, but this is the first one I think I came across with Foul Repth. Um, being able to full heal the whole party is a huge, huge thing. Or even just full heal the front line. If you have two people sort of tanking for you and you're throwing out background damage, 
uh, especially in the areas of a magic-resistant enemy. As much as I appreciate trying to beast Bayonet or other people trying to beast Bayonet for me so I could get a shot in and get experience, I'd much rather write that battle off and make sure they are healthy to keep going at it. Now, two casters in the party, you pretty much gotta go the other route. Um, Rip Main is on here as well, and in Infection, Mutation, Outbreak, and Quarantine, having Resurrect on your gear, on a stick if you will, is really, really nice. In Fragment, you find the casting animation is an absolute dog, and uh, Resurrect is one of those things where you just never use the spell Rip Main because the item is so much more efficient time-wise. Got a few awakenings on here as well. Mina Yamu, Omina Seppu Zot, which is probably one of the most commonly used awakenings I've had in my time playing, and Ormina Anigaso. The Sublime Stole is a, uh, it's an equipment that is near and dear to my heart. Again, level 87, light armor. It's giving you a balanced plus two in your elemental resistances and some decent magic stats. Uh, the big thing for me, again, thinking party-centric at all times, it's got Rig Same and Rig Game on it. I don't have to sit there and balance out my equipment to get both of these, and I have them on demand for my character and my party. It takes a while to set up this buff, especially if you're the only one doing it in your group, but everybody having constant health and skill point regeneration is really, really helpful, especially once you get past like level 25 there. Those extra gains really start getting noticeable. Um, Again, you've got Awakenings here, um, or Mina Anigaso again, as well as Mina Uji, which is a fun one that gives you three elemental summons, uh, or Mina Jukshiku and or Mina Rushiku. Uberguard. This is a level 97 light hand armor. Um, this is going to give me a little bit of variety in my extra spells. I typically only run a specific spell setup, and we'll get into that a little later in the video here, but this is going to give me access to Fanny Cruz, or Fanny Cruz if you so prefer, and Orvacrom. Uh, Orvacrom is a fantastic spell. I have long been a proponent of the ROM spells. Uh, very accurate spells, and as long as you get that little hit in, um, this of course being a level 3 attack is not going to hit for a little. Uh, you're able to get experience when the monster is felled. See a lot of returning favorites in the Awakenings, but I do believe this is the first time we see Mina Yamu Fa, which again gives us three uh, elemental summons. Moving down to the boots, we've got the Alert Greaves. You'll notice the bonus effect of Null Damage. Uh, we pretty much figured out through trial and error that instances of Null Damage do not stack. Basically, as long as you have one, that's where you're at. Uh, so I try to get some Null Damage on my characters if I can. Uh, just for that shot where a physical attack comes in and it does zero. It's a nice little thing. Um, level 87 light leg armor here. Again, most of the year is at 87, and I feel it's pretty solid at this point. Um, you get Farai Cruz and Organzot, so we've covered Darkness, Thunder, Fire, and Earth on our extra spells here. And once again, you've got four Awakenings. New to the party, I believe, are Ormina Ganshido, Ormina Vakgaro, uh, which is a fire one, and Mina Noku, which seems to be the complementing uh, awakening to Mina Maji. As I said, the uh, weapons are a little different for me here. Getting into them, I actually run two staves uh, primary with my Wave Master at all times. The first one is the Staff of Truth. It's level 95. Um, 
as you can see, the stats on it are incredible because, again, it's a level 95 weapon. It's not rare. It's actually a fairly common drop once you get in higher level areas. But what it gives you is level 4, the highest level summons, for Yarthgen's Vulcan and Rhinex. So you've got Earth Element, Fire Element, and Darkness Element at their highest potential damage from the summon. The summons hit hard and they hit a wide area of effect. They're also going to lock most enemies in place. Especially helpful with Rhinek because that spell takes a while. Doesn't sound like the most efficient thing to use because it takes so long, but you're able to sneak a spell or two in the meantime while that monster is either locked in place or considerably slowed down by Rhinac targeting it, it's still going to hit pretty darn heavy when it hits, barring like an elemental resistance. And um, it gives your front line a chance to really chip away or get the heck out of there and heal if they need to. So Rhinac Fa actually has a lot of strategic bonuses for being a slower spell. Apologies, this controller drives me nuts. You'll probably hear several disconnect reconnects in the background. There's not much I could do about that. Uh, Vulcan Fa hits hard. It, it's a fire spell. Super fast. Really all of the Vulcan spells pretty much deal damage instantaneously. This one has a slight delay for the extra particle effects, um, and Yarthgen's also very fast, efficient damage. Uh, moving on to the Caduceus Rod, it is the complementary staff. You can see we drop one point in the magic attack, but by this point in my level progression they're both giving me 99s overall. And where before I had Earth, Fire, and Darkness, now I have Marrows, Crake, and Lancier, so Water, Wood, and Thunder. I have all six elemental summons at my disposal. <clears throat> Again, at level four, at their highest effect. Going to go ahead and sneak into a dungeon here and just kind of show you how I play this. Um for part two of the video. And welcome back. Uh, rejoining the video here in the online section this time, I want to kind of go over my setup and then hit a field and dungeon real quick and kind of show you the character in action. Um, first thing, I do have to carry Speed Charms with me. I also carry Beast Bane and Knight's Bane with me at all times. A, to help my front line if there is a physical tolerant enemy and they need to get their shots in. Of course, I could just stand away and blast if it's not a big deal for experience. And B, in case I need to take something down, especially when soloing that has magical tolerance. Um, there is no way in Fragment for a Wave Master to get Apdu, the skill that gives you the speed boost. On gear, uh, the Time Sash, I believe, or the Time Gear in general, was the only things in IMOQ that a Wave Master would be able to equip with that, and those items are not available in Fragment. So, Speed Charms are my go-to here. Um, also running elixirs because you may have noticed if you're familiar with higher level wave masters due to the nature of how I've built my character. Um, my hit points are a bit higher than the typical wave master, so the extra healing very much needed. Um, running artisan souls, I also have 99 emperor souls. Those I just collected mainly through farming dungeons and high level area chests. Um, artisan souls, however, do more than enough for me as I've only got 367 SP. It's a sizable pool, but there are far larger ones, especially in this level range. But the 250 from artisan soul is more than enough for me. Looking at shortcuts, you'll see I have three elemental summons set up in my L2 block. That is my attack block. Yarthkins, Rhinac, and Vulcan. Now what I will do when I switch between staffs 
is use the elemental summons in complementary spots. For instance, I have Vulcan to L2 and X. Uh, fire and water are sort of opposing elements. So when I switch to the Caduceus uh, staff, I will switch from Vulcan to Marrows in that spot. So it's fire and water in L2 and X, darkness and thunder in L2 and triangle, and earth and wood in L2 and circle. That leaves L2 and square, which at lower levels and for story dungeons where I need it is where I'm going to slot in data drain. But as you could see right now, it's where I have my fourth spell. Right now it is Farai Cruise because that's an element not covered in these three. It also gives me a lower SP option as all of the Fa level summons cost 110 SP. Farai Cruise, I believe, comes in at 60 and still hits hard. Uh, you'll see again, Fel Rep is set up in the L1 block in L1 triangle for that full heal effect. I've got Rig Game and Rig Same set on shortcut simply as a matter of convenience. I don't really need them on shortcut, I just find it quicker that way. L1 and X. Knight's Blood, because physical defense is always a nice thing for a wave master. Got my typical curative items in the R1 block, Antidote and Restorative being circle and square respectively. Healing Elixir on R1 and Triangle, and R1 and X is my Resurrect. My R2 block is just sort of my catch-all for everything else. There I've got my Artisan Soul, Beast Bane, Knight's Bane, and Speed Charm. So let's go into a field. I'm not going to try for a super high level. Perfect first pull is a level 74 water. Uh, Sacred Necrotic Tundra. I'm, I'm probably going to bounce about in here as I do commentary. I do want to get some footage of the weapon switching and the different elements, but that's largely going to depend on the monster mix. As I said, once we get into the field, I'm going to go ahead, pop a fairy's orb, see how close I am to the portals in case an ambush comes, I know what direction to run. Quickly, I'm going to speed charm and again, get rig game and rig same up. Rig game first so I could recoup this precious SP casting the other buff and away we go. Looks like we've got some jealous cobras and a... Conqueror, which is darkness tolerant. So we're just going to go ahead and finish off the resurrection shenanigans here as quickly as possible. Cobra, of course, being earth element, that was uh, less than useful. And the Conqueror being darkness tolerant, not the smartest play overall by me, but you can see Yarthkins really coming in handy. Not Yarthkins, Rhinac coming in handy there. Uh, with the stun allowing me to get away. Just keep messing with Farai Cruz there. Very sloppy battle. But we made it through. Go ahead, Artisan Soul back up. Let's see what we get out of this portal. Perfect. Get ourselves an Aurora Feather. Yarthkins has the elemental hit on that if it hits. Otherwise, I mean, it's still going to be a quick battle. There you go, over 5,000. So when you get those elemental hits lined up, you're practically, you know, one-shotting these things. And when you don't have them lined up, just backtrack, switch to the Caduceus Rod. I'm going to go into my shortcuts, all two in circle. Grab Crake. And now I've got that elemental hit set up. Air bird coming behind me. Hopefully I could do this a little quicker this time. And then catch it in retreat after it thought the battle was over. Not the easiest to manage, but uh, 
it's fun for me. And again, now that we have some time to set it back up, we'll go ahead and set our other shortcuts back. Never did switch out for Rye Cruise, and that's bound to our gear, so it stayed there the whole time. And as long as we're on Staff of Truth, we've got a balanced set of four. Got a Cobra coming in. Made it through there. Get my heal as my buffs have just run out. And while we're letting the SP pool go, we'll show off the Caduceus Rod a little bit here. As this rod probably pairs better to the monster mix out in the field. But one thing we have to do is switch out for Rye Cruise since we know we've got Aurora Feathers out here. An Earth Element attack seems to be the call. So we'll go Organzot. And again, even just using four attacks at a time, I've got a wide variety of spells available to me simply for the gear I have on hand. It's a little awkward switching in solo because I'm trying to keep an eye on hit points and everything. Okay, there we are, Darkness Tolerant Conquerors. Get three Jealous Cobras as well. Drop a couple Crakes there. And this should take out both the Conqueror and the Cobra, I would think. Yeah, much easier to get through. And as you could see, that was a very lucrative battle. Picking up an Ocean's Rod. Got to re-up on the Speed Charm. So yeah, two Ocean's Rods and a Sojin. But already I've cast... I think six different spells in battle here. Uh, just to keep things active, I'm gonna go ahead and throw a Marrows here for the sake of variety. And as you can see, Marrows being, you know, Water Element, which is one of my stronger suits, it's still hitting for a fair bit on its own. really like to get these two grouped together. But I'll take that as well. Just keep dropping Lightning on the Conquerors, that works well enough. Getting Enya and some tribal robes. Really good gear in this field, actually. Again, dropping Lancier there because of the two effects I have to worry about. The resurrection is by far and away the worst. Just kind of get locked in place on that spell. Still more than enough in the tank without buffs to get off three summons and a heal. So we are mana effective at this point. Our SP bar is certainly not hurting us. Nice thing about the Conquerors is while they do a ton of damage, about the only extra effect they have is the Resurrection. You don't have to worry about things like confusion or paralysis from them. Probably just going to wrap this up at the field clear, especially if I keep getting wandering conquerors. Throw an Organzod out there for the finish. Saved a little 
Saved a little SP, saved a little time, just had the rocks shoot up. This time we're going to lead off with Crake. Have that front line locked up, sneak from behind, and Lancer the Conqueror while it's not really paying attention. Come back, finish off with a Crake there. One Artisan Soul later, we should be able to Lancer the Conqueror for the finish. Bit presumptuous of me that it wouldn't get the resurrection off, but I kind of felt with that timing we had the inside track. Pick up a very useful artisan soul there. And like I said, that's my Wave Master build in a nutshell. It's a little awkward at times, especially when I am slightly out of practice with it, but I'm fairly decent with menu navigation, and it's a ton of fun to be able to switch up to an elemental weakness no matter what. It's a very well-read character, not always the quickest to act, but certainly going to do its best um, to hit as hard as possible with the knowledge it has. That's going to wrap this video up. I do hope you've enjoyed it, and I do hope you are enjoying what this series is going to be. I'm going to go through at least my three main characters. I have a total of five uh, right now, so that's probably as many as I'm going to do, but just go over the builds and my reasoning behind them. Uh, this has been a Grumpy Old Guy Gaming. Thank you for watching. Take care and we'll see you around.